Thrift stores around here have been suffering a rather dry spell, selling nothing really interesting or noteworthy aside from the usual, to steal a term from YouTube user UXW Bill, black plastic crap from the late 90s and early 2000s, like broken alarm clocks, battered and worn out VCRs, and the usual gamut of electronic typewriters and VHS tapes galore. And this caught me rather by surprise because not only was it something that I wasn't expecting to find, because usually this particular thrift store only sells cheapy 35mm film cameras that are a step away from being a disposable model. This was actually not even sold where the cameras are sold. This was actually in a bin where they sell power supplies, AV cables, and things like that. And they actually had the charger sitting on top of the camera and the charger and the camera were rubber banded together instead of being sold with the cameras which is where it belonged but it was only seven dollars despite its rather tired and dare i say ragged appearance it's a little interesting in that it actually has this cover that you slide down to turn it on and reveal the lens the flash and the self timer led this is actually comparable to a bunch of Sony point and shoots that I was interested in back in the day, um, around 2010, uh, 2011, the TX series cameras, which I actually ended up buying an example of in 2015. Same style, pretty much. The lens and everything is hidden behind this door. So this is Fujifilm's attempt at... Uh, I guess imitating the Sony. So this is the Fujifilm FinePix Z90 and of course like everything from the thrift store there's no accessories included usually so even though this has a very strange proprietary size USB port to transfer videos and photos to your computer I don't have any way to do that because I don't have the cable. And then you do get this lanyard strap here and then you see this little keyhole here. That's actually for the battery compartment. And this did come with a battery and an SD card. So it did come with a battery, which is still good. And it's kind of nice because they actually color code the battery. So they put this little orange stripe here. And that matches up with this pin here to release the battery. So you're not left guessing which way to insert the battery. So the contacts, contact the actual contacts in the camera and so over on the top that is a speaker because the microphone is actually on the front right here that little pinhole five times optical zoom this claims to have a wide Fujinon zoom lens you do have a conventional camera flash here it's kind of nice the black and the chrome and then on the back you can see that there's two physical buttons for alternating between the camera mode and playback and review mode. This is what piqued my interest at the store because I saw an actual video record button and then of course you have your customary shutter button with the world's smallest zoom wheel. That little tiny nub is the only thing that you have to grab onto to, to use the zoom. You probably noticed the lack of joysticks, controls, and buttons on the back of this camera because this is actually a touchscreen camera. So I'll just flip open this front cover here. So because this is a touchscreen, everything is done through that and not physical buttons like turning on and off macro and turning on and off the on-screen display. And then over here, this red button actually lets you switch between different shooting modes. So you get scene recognition where it tries to automatically pick the best scene shooting mode automatically and then regular auto which is a little simplified over the scene recognition mode. It kind of just uses the automatic uh, settings and doesn't try to be the judge of which shooting mode it should use. It also has touch and shoot and touch and track. So I can click over here, it will focus on the subject and then it'll take a still image. Likewise, if I click touch and track, it'll actually keep focus on the touched object. So this is good for, I guess, sports and stuff like that. And so you click where you want it to focus on, and then when you're ready to take a picture, you just press the shutter button, 
and it's already pre-focused on that specific subject. There's also a panorama mode, so if you click that, it'll allow you to take three photos and then it'll stitch them all together. And then there's also some degree of manual control that you can get through the program AE setting. So you have to go into the menu and then you can adjust the exposure, the ISO, the image size, which goes from 14 megapixels, four by three. You can take 16 by nine pictures as well. And white balance settings, so you can change them here, but there's no way to actually manually configure the white balance on here. You just have to use the presets. You can also turn on and off guidelines, which will put a grid on the screen to help you center your pictures or use the rule of thirds, whichever is your preference. And the touch screen is a bit finicky, but it does work for the most part. Also could put it on silent, which will get rid of all those noises and beeps when you're using the menu. Now this is actually pretty surprising. You can record 640x480, 4x3 uh, full screen video, which is customary for point and shoot cameras of this time period, but you can actually switch this over to 1280x720 HD video. So this is the screen, shows you how many pictures you have remaining on the memory. HD video recording, I'm pretty sure this L refers to what megapixel setting we're using to take the pictures and then the N is referring to normal quality and sound is turned off that's why you have this speaker icon and the battery apparently is going dead so we'll have to keep this brief. This does automatically recognize portrait and landscape shooting modes so when you rotate the camera it'll flip around the on-screen display and again using that really small zoom control it is optical zoom you might even be able to hear the lens zooming in and out, clicking away. I'll just take a test photo here of this RGB controller remote. And that was without the flash. And now I'll take the same picture with force flash on. And the pictures actually look very good. The true test, of course, will be to review these pictures on the computer with a much larger screen and then I could be an accurate judge of its quality. And then on the top is again that aforementioned video recording button. So if I press this button now, it's gonna exit photo mode and start recording video. So I don't know what kind of quality this thing is going to be able to muster up. It is set to 720p right now and don't even know what format it records in, if it's MOV or .mp4, what kind of bitrate or audio settings it uses, but let's see, can we zoom in while we're filming? Yep, we can actually zoom in and out, but uh, not bad. It's pretty grainy in low light. So here's another test in low lighting. This is kind of like my junk cabinet with all my office supplies and um, see that the video is very grainy and of course there's no autofocus in video so you have to stop the recording and then start it again in order to, to refocus everything so I started a new recording and now I was able to focus it on this Handycam's tape transport controls and interestingly I haven't turned on macro mode but it was still able to focus up close so now I'll turn macro mode on and see how much closer it can focus. Well now it's really close, probably an inch away, if that, and everything is still in focus with macro mode turned on. Alright, so that concludes some test photos I just took with this, as well as some test video. So now I'm going to take the memory card out and put this in my computer and see what it looks like. And upon my first look at the pictures, they're actually pretty decent. Without the flash, they're definitely a little noisy, but definitely not that bad. And once you turn the flash on, the ISO goes down, and because of that, the image is a lot crisper and less noisy. So it looks like it's using the Motion JPEG codec for the AVI files. And it's saying that the bitrate is 22 megabits per second, but 
the video is definitely not 22 megabit per second quality. Now if you change the movie quality over to 640 by 480, the quality obviously drops down, but the audio does take a rather steep nosedive into the dumps compared to recording in 720p. So if you want the best audio quality out of this little camera, I would suggest recording in 720p. Here's a quick test in 480p recording mode. Not going to record too much video in this setting because the quality is pretty bad, but the audio is even worse. You could probably hear all that noise and static in the background. So I don't know why this in 480p has such bad audio, and yet in 720p the audio does a total 180 and actually sounds pretty acceptable. So I definitely can't complain. This is definitely a pretty capable point-and-shoot camera for kicking around. Dare I even say a beater camera since the previous owner definitely inflicted quite a bit of wear and tear already. What more could I possibly do to it? So now I have the camera, the charger, and a working battery all for under $10.